everyone. Here's how I put together Butterworks 6446 and I'm doing things a little bit differently since I'm making it breastfeeding friendly. But you should be able to follow this video even if you aren't going to do the whole breastfeeding friendly thing. At least that is my hope. Now if you are adapting this to being breastfeeding friendly, check out the video down below on how to cut out your top pattern pieces. It is linked below along with all the materials and time stamps and all those other goodies. So once you're done cutting out your pieces, you'll have a number one piece and one number two piece. Well, you can cut out two of these if you'd rather not deal with facings if you're not doing the whole breastfeeding friendly version. Regardless of the version that you're doing, it is nice to clip where those pleats are going to start and stop and I will show how that is helpful in a bit. So then you'll have your back pieces again you can either cut two and then have two facings or you can cut four of these back pieces and again I like to clip at the bottom of that dart. Then you'll have a skirt front and back and I clip where those pleats are going to go too. I really like clipping if you haven't noticed and all of these clips that I've mentioned are around quarter of an inch that way they are way inside that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And finally you'll have four pockets if you want to put in the pockets of your dress. Which is an obvious yes because who wouldn't want pockets? <laughs> And you'll cut out the sash if you wish to have that. So first I put in those pleats across the bodice pieces. To do this I lined the pattern piece up with the fabric and put pins in each hole. And these holes are where the pleat is going to end. So I carefully pull the pin through the tissue and then I fold the fabric over and line up the heads of those pins. And then I insert a pin where the heads of those pins, those marking pins are. Well, just to the side of those marking pins, but that is perfectly fine. And I know where the pin enters the fabric is where I need to stop that pleat. And so I match up the clips from before. This is where the pleat is going to start. And then I sew from those clip marks to that hole left by the pin. And this method might sound like a pain in the butt, but it works for me. And I find it actually rather easy to do, so you might be surprised. Just give it a try. And then I iron those pleats into place and there you go. I repeat the same method to the other pleats before moving on to those darts in the back of the dress. I make these darts putting a pin at the top of the dart and matching it to clips at the bottom of the dart. And I give that an ironing and then I sew from the clips angling off gradually to that pin so that dart has a nice smooth shape. You do not want to give it a, a curve at the dart. You want to angle off very gradually. And then I iron that dart away from the center back. And then I join the bodice front pieces to the back pieces at the shoulder seams. And after ironing the seams open, I serge those raw edges at the shoulder seam. And then I set that bodice aside and I worked on those facings. I joined the appropriate facing together at the shoulder seam. And do not mind that some of my facings were cut on the wrong side of the fabric. I made that mistake and it will just be our little secret. <laughs> so I iron those seams open and run those raw edges through the serger. I also serge the long side of that facing. You know, that side that isn't going to be sewn down, I, I'm searching that side. <laughs> And then I sew each face into the appropriate area of the dress. And then I understitch before clipping the curves, pinning in place, and giving everything a very good pressing. Then I laid the bodice pieces across each other and lined them up on that bottom raw edges. So those bottom raw edges should be in line with each other. And making sure those facings stay folded over in place, I basted the sides together so I would have one bodice front piece now. It's all going to be one assembly. I also did a bit of top stitching where those two bodice front pieces come together so it wouldn't gap on me while I'm wearing it. And then I sewed the side seams together and at this point I tried it on just to see how everything was fitting and then I ironed those seams open and sent them through the serger to enclose the raw edges. And then I could set the bodice aside and work on the dress skirt. I folded the pleats over as directed by the pattern piece and then I marked the bottom of the pleat with a pen. I'm just marking it with a pen since I'm dealing with black fabric, but had I dealt with a fabric that I could have marked with a friction on heat activated pen, I definitely would have grabbed that sucker. <laughs> then I sewed all of those pleats in place and gave everything a really good ironing. I ironed all of those pleats away from the center of the body so the 
pleats in the front are going away from center front and the pleats in the back are going away from center back. And then I pinned those positions and basted them in place. And then it was time for those pockets and while I suppose you could skip this step, I do not know why you would. <laughs> they are so worth the extra bit of time and energy. So first I served around the top and curved edge of those pockets. Sorry, if you hear these little these little noises, it's because I'm nursing Henry's. Anywho, then I measured where the pockets should go, but apparently I took a bad measurement since the pockets are a smidgen lower than they should be. Just an FYI, I did measure 8 inches, but really they should be around 6 inches. I'm moving on with life. <laughs> I didn't realize this mistake until it was too late. So. Anywho, I sewed each pocket to the skirt with right sides together and then I took each side to the serger to enclose those raw edges. And once all of that was done, I ironed the pockets over along that seam. So basically, everything is facing the same direction here. The fabric from the skirt and the fabric from the pocket, both of those seams are going the same direction. I'm not splitting that seam open is what I'm trying to say. And then I pinned the pocket together starting with the top of the pocket, feeling my way down that pocket to make sure each opening is the same length so there aren't any gaps while you're wearing it. And then I pinned the bottom of the pocket together. This is just how I pinned a pocket for, I don't know, 10 or, or more years now and it works for me. These three little pins. So when it comes to sewing a pocket, I start at the top of the skirt and I sew down until I get to the top of that pocket. And at this point, I am just inside those pocket seams. And I sew just past the top of the pocket, maybe half an inch or, or whatever. It's okay, Henry. And then I put my needle down and turn my work. And I sew across the top of that pocket. Again, put that needle down and turn your work. And then I sew around the curve of the pocket. Okay. And I am back stitching here before I continue to sew down the skirt. But you can also back stitch after you've made that turn to continue sewing down the skirt. I didn't do it here, but I've done that as well in the past. I've also sewn pockets without these little back stitches, and the pockets have held up just fine too. So maybe they aren't necessary, but I figure they can't hurt. They only take about two seconds to do. It's just a matter of remembering to do them. <laughs> So I gave those pockets an ironing and I pinned the bodice to the skirt at the waist and I make sure to match up those side seams and then I do whatever easing is required and it's a good point to try on your garment. I actually decided to take up that waist seam some so instead of 5 eighths of an inch I went back and made it around, bless you, I made it around an inch. Now, if you're making this breastfeeding friendly, you'll want to pin the sides of these gaps in place as it makes sense for your curves. I pinned the sides in place and then top stitch over top of them. I also added one snap to each side to hold those gaps in place while I'm wearing them. Obviously, you can just pop the snap open when it's time to feed. Now, if you want to add the sash, you can do that. And I did make it, but with babies and baby wearing, I'm not sure how practical it will be. But if you want to make the sash, you'll sew the two pieces together at the back of the sash and then iron that seam open and then fold the sash lengthwise so the right sides are touching and then you can iron that in place and then sew the length together. Now you do want to have a gap somewhere along this length of the sash. It does not really matter where. I like to leave the gap somewhere towards the ends of the sash, but again, it does not matter. Just make sure to leave a gap though. That is important. <laughs> then I trimmed up that seam and turned the sash right sides out using that gap. You can sew the gap together by hand, or I suppose you can go over it with your machine if you'd rather. Okay, so I am loving this dress. I will be honest though, it, while it is very doable to unpin your nursing bra for feeding, it's not as easy as like a t-shirt or something. So I wouldn't say that it's hard to do, it's just not as easy as a loose fitting t-shirt. But it's a great option if you want to just get a little bit more dressed up. And it's just great because it doesn't scream that you're breastfeeding, you know what I mean, if that makes sense. It's just subtle. Uh, you do have a built-in cover, which is great. I mean, don't get me wrong, you breastfeed your baby however it makes you comfortable, but these things really help me, especially if I'm around people that I don't want to nurse in front of, but I find myself in a situation where I still got to get the job done. I'm sure all y'all mamas can relate. <laughs> 
<laughs> to those situations. So anywho, I hope this video was helpful. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.